Bottle Rocket is a movie that pleasantly surprised me, and it's one that I don't think gets quite as much love as it should. With its simple premise, unique humour, and possibly the funniest performance from Owen Wilson I've ever seen, this movie really was a joy to watch, and I don't ever hear it talked about. I feel like it's one of those obscure movies that kind of slipped through the cracks for most people, or it kind of just became a faded memory for those who have seen it. But I think this movie is better than most people give it credit for. It has such a strange tone and sense of humour that I kind of have trouble putting to words because I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it tone wise so I'm gonna go over the background of this movie what it's about and then just give my thoughts on the movie and what I like about it especially considering the background behind this movie and how its idea came from the minds of two college students at the time so this movie actually started out in 1992 as a short film it was written by two college students who wanted to make a movie you probably know them as Wes Anderson and Owen Wilson they were both students at the University of Texas at Austin where they had a playwriting class together and eventually moved into an apartment together and it was their experiences together as college roommates that inspired the writing of Bottle Rocket. And originally when we were writing it, we wanted to do sort of like a Godfather type movie, like a Goodfellas, like a real gritty street movie. And then it just became clear as we looked at the pages that we didn't really have the background for that type of thing. So we decided to go in a comedic direction. And Wes Anderson said that their lives were a little unstructured during college. So it was from that feeling, I guess, that directionless, directionlessness that's a word, that they started writing the film and wrote characters who also lacked structure or direction in their lives. Of course, one of these characters actually ended up being played by Owen Wilson himself, and the other was played by his younger brother, Luke Wilson. And they even recruited a friend of theirs named Robert Musgrave to play the third main character, Bob. The short film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 1994, two years after they shot the film, after which it came to the attention of James L. Brooks. This guy was kind of a big deal. He was one of the big producers behind The Simpsons. He was like the Owen and Wes, yo, you guys need to make this a feature film. So he brought them to LA where they spent the next year working on the script and expanding it to feature length and the next year after that shooting it. And the feature came out in 1996 to be the directorial debut of Wes Anderson and the acting debut of the Wilson brothers. Obviously good quickness. Yeah, in and out pretty fast. Real fast, man. And good intensity. High intensity. Great intensity because I was like, do do doing like yeah, really and the, fast. And the preparation was good, you know. I think thank that's you, your specialty. Thank you, thank you. This movie wasn't successful money-wise. It was actually did pretty bad at the box office. Didn't even make back a fifth of its budget. But even though this movie flopped at the box office, it launched the careers of Wes Anderson and Owen Wilson. And I think part of the reason why this movie is so overlooked is because it's a Wes Anderson movie, and so it's been buried by all his later films that it supposedly doesn't live up to. Or maybe people just think it's shit, I don't know. Now the feature length film that came of the short isn't too much different to the short. Like a lot of short films that get made into feature films, the short film basically got written into the first act of the feature film using basically identical dialogue and scenes and whatnot. But the way the short film was adapted into feature length and the way it built on its characters and its storyline in general was pretty well done. Touches on themes of friendship and being an outsider and chasing dreams and even though these are just subtle themes hidden in a quirky comedy, I feel like the movie really does have something to say about these things and it does so in a very unique way. You know like three friends who have a lot of heart and ambition and want to commit to a goal they've set for themselves. Even even if the goal is a little impractical or unconventional or just fucking dumb. At the start of the movie, we're introduced to Luke Wilson's character Anthony, who's being released from a mental hospital after suffering a mental breakdown. The reason why he had this mental breakdown isn't really explained, but meeting him at this point kind of just introduces his character traits. He's a bit depressed, and he's still trying to figure out his place in this big cruel world. He's jaded and doesn't seem to have much of a drive to do anything, and kind of just goes with the flow and hopes everything works out. So in saying that, Anthony is actually a really calm and gentle dude, despite being the one who was just just in a mental hospital, especially in comparison to his friend Dignan, who's played by Owen Wilson. Dignan's a bit weird, he's clearly got some loose screws, and he's obviously more volatile and unstable than Anthony. He meets Anthony as he's being released from the hospital, and gets Anthony to climb out the window, using bed sheets tied together, and it's meant to fulfill his fantasy of being a criminal escaping a place like jail. To be fair, I have to say that is pretty cool. So clearly Owen Wilson in this movie is basically a child, and he's kind of that weird friend that you know from 
high school that you can't help but love. The one who's a troublemaker and always doing weird shit and you can't really help but go along with it because deep down you know it's kind of funny. And the most important thing about Dignan is that he wants to be a leader. He doesn't really listen to other people all that much but he always wants to be heard when he's got something to say. He wants to be the one to call the shots and make all the plans even though he acts like a child. And Owen Wilson as this character is easily one of the best things about this movie. Some of the funniest moments in this movie come from Dignan and the things that he does and the things that he says. Not to mention this movie is the first time we ever see Owen Wilson say wow in a movie. What are you working on? Oh wow, hey, that's one of your little drawings. There he goes, pole vaults over the thing, there he goes, and there he is. I love it though, I love it, you're creative. So Anthony and Dignan hop on a bus where Dignan's like, yo, check out this incredibly specific 75 year plan that I've made for us. And what he proposes is that they pursue a life of crime for the rest of their lives. So the plot that unfolds is pretty simple. Dignan, Anthony, and their friend Bob want to pull off a heist. So they start out doing some practice robberies in preparation for their big job for a crime boss who goes by the name of Mr. Henry, who is someone that Dignan idolizes. They rob a bookstore where they learn that they actually suck ass at being criminals. A bigger one, you idiot! What do you Don't think? Don't call me an idiot, you punk. And then after that, Dignan insists that they go on the run to get a feel for being wanted criminals or something. So they go on the run and stay at a motel in the middle of nowhere. And this is where things get a little bumpy because while Dignan stays committed to the big heist all the way through, Anthony falls in love with the housekeeper, Inez, who doesn't speak much English, and Bob gets family issues popping up back at home with his brother getting arrested and all sorts of things. So friction arises between the group when their interests leading up to the big job for Mr. Henry start to go separate ways. That's really the best way I can summarize the plot for those who haven't seen it, so I hope I sold it. So to me, this movie has a bit of a bittersweet undertone despite being portrayed as a simple comedy. Because on the surface, these characters are funny and easy to laugh at, but each of them have some kind of pent up sadness inside them. And when you really think about what's going on with all of them, all of them are trying to compensate for something that's missing in their lives. Dignan, for example, kind of hints at the beginning that he doesn't really come from much in terms of family, so by force of nature, he wants to assume the role of being a leader of his own group so he can feel a sense of purpose, for lack of a better word. So for Dignan, the main objective isn't to pull off a successful heist, it's really just to be a leader. He fucking sucks at being a leader, but that's kind of besides the point. He really tries, is the main thing. And he really tries to plan out every step of the journey and make it work and drag his friends along on this adventure, whether they like it or not, because he's so committed to this weird dream of his. Anthony, on the other hand, is more jaded and lacks the enthusiasm that Dignan has when he comes out of the hospital in the beginning, the only explanation we get is that he was exhausted. So I get it, life do be like that, but he goes with the flow not only to make himself feel less alone, but also to make Dignan feel less alone because he knows how much this project means to him. And when he meets Inez, she gives him that spark that he needed at this point in his life. He falls in love and then he actually becomes like, happy. And Bob to me is kind of just that random friend who's just there for shits and gigs, but he's going through some shit too with an abusive brother. So what it comes down to is that all three characters really are outsiders who come from different circumstances and it's through their robberies or their planning for their robberies that they're able to bond with each other and just feel a little less alone. If you're feeling alone, like nobody in the world cares, nobody in the fucking world gives a shit, I'm here. Oh, that was a I'm ready to listen, man. And these characters have kind of a childish innocence to them that just makes them so fun to watch. They are genuinely trying to pull off a heist, but they are a little delusional in the way they go about it. They can't plan, they're not intimidating, and they act like kids. I paid for the gun. Say it again. Say it one more time. Say it again. Repeat what you just said. I paid for the gun. And it's that subtle, dry humor that just hits the spot for me and makes this movie such a fun and easy watch. The humor of having characters who have formed their own little bubble where they can just act like morons and act like kids and just lose themselves in a fantasy as a means to feel less alone and have friends around them. And eventually it becomes clear that all they really wanted to do was fill some kind of void in their lives. Things don't go exactly as planned in the end, but at the end of the day, they stuck by each other and each of them gets what they really want deep down. And I think something this movie shows is that sometimes the journey towards a goal and the experiences you gain along the way are more important than the goal itself. Even if you're just a dumbass group of guys trying to be Robert De Niro in heat, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have each other's backs and follow your dreams because at that point you've got nothing to lose and you still might find something great either way. But also, don't be like Robert De Niro in that movie. He did some 
pretty bad things in that movie. Point is, when you follow your dreams, it's about the journey, not the destination. And it might be cliche, but at the end of the day, this was a movie made by a first time director with first time actors who didn't even know if the whole thing was going to work out. Luke Wilson mentioned in an interview that he thought this was the only movie he'd ever be in. And Owen Wilson was apparently planning to join the Marines when this movie flopped because he didn't think he had a future in acting. So I think that just shows that all these guys really wanted to do was make a movie and walk away with the experience of having made a movie with their friends and brothers. We've been able to do this the way we wanted to with it, with our own team of people, you know, with the cast that we wanted of our friends and um, the story that we wanted to tell and the style we wanted to tell it in, you know, that we've been able to do it on a big enough scale that where hopefully some people will see it, but without having to really uh, compromise what we wanted to do or change it that much, you know, we're still doing the stuff we thought was funny all along, the stuff that made us laugh. My interpretation could be a little off, for all I know they could have been high as fuck when they wrote the script, but I still think this is a good movie to watch regardless, especially if you're into filmmaking, because to me, knowing the background behind this movie and how it came to be, just makes me appreciate it even more. And yeah, it might not live up to Wes Anderson's later work, but I still think it deserves to be recognized, at least as a pretty solid debut. But that's all I got for this one, thank you for watching the video, and if you haven't seen Bottle Rocket, you should check it out, I highly recommend it. And if you don't like it, feel free to come back here and yell at me in the comments for wasting your time, even though there's nothing you can really do about it. I'll see you in the next one. He has no character, man!